has no escape, nor do we want it. We've come to thrive on it and each other. You can't get the adrenaline pumping without the terror, good people. Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Christian Hannah Hoare here. Today, we're going to be talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Now, this is a movie that I go back with. This is actually a very special movie to me. And even though I'm kind of going out of order reviewing some of these Texas Chainsaw films, I figure you guys are going to come along for the ride with me anyway. The Beginning was the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre film I saw in theaters, okay? I was just getting to the age to where I was becoming more aware of horror, more aware of horror icons, and at the time, I was in the middle of high schoolish. And I remember my mom, for some reason, took me to just go see The Beginning. And we weren't really people that just went to go see extremely gory horror movies. But lo and behold, my mom took me to see The Beginning. And I had a great time. Now, I have a great affinity with this movie. I love this movie very much so. And I feel like it gets a little lost in the shuffle. But that's not to say that that's a problem. Because the fact of the matter is, there are a lot of really good Texas Chainsaw films. They are, there are. In my opinion, there are. In my opinion, um, there isn't a badly made Texas Chainsaw film yet. There's only one that I'm not a big fan of, and that was the latest one, Leatherface. Um, it just doesn't feel like Texas Chainsaw to me. It just feels like something else. That's the biggest complaint I have about it. I wish I could explain more, but maybe some of you will understand. But this one does. The Texas Chainsaw Mask at the Beginning is not really a great title for this, because quite frankly, 2017's movie should have been called Leatherface the beginning or Tex Chainsaw Massacre the beginning because that really is the beginning you're seeing you're seeing Bubba or Tommy at a young age this movie should really be called Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning of the end because the film starts out we have a flashback sequence where we see the mother of Leatherface basically give birth and then the kid is thrown into a dumpster brought to the family that we now know as the the Sawyer Hewitt family and you know we see him working at the meat factory right as it's closing. The town that they live in in Texas is shutting down. Everything is shutting down. The f- stores are shutting down. The law enforcement is leaving. It is a weird situation. This town has become condemned. Everybody's leaving. And we see Arlie Ermey, who is just as magical in this one as he was in 2003, you know, get a call saying, look, man, that boy killed somebody at the shop. He's on the loose. He's got a chainsaw. We got to go get him. And there's this great shot. First of all, that that hot Texas heat is felt immensely in this film. And I think that's great. And we see great shots of Leatherface just walking down that hot road with the chainsaw. And Arlie Ermey kills the cop and takes his clothes, making himself Sheriff Hoyt now. And in the film, he wants everybody to call him Sheriff Hoyt now. So that's great. But what I really like about this movie is our leads. We've got two brothers and two women, and I always liked this. I always liked that deal with the two brothers and the two women. I thought that worked really well. I liked the camaraderie between the brothers. You get the one brother who does not want to go to war. He is scared to go to war. He doesn't want to do it. And the older brother's like, I'm doing this for you. I'm going back with you because I love you. So it was a really great dichotomy with that. And, you know, I fell for the characters. Even though there's not a massive amount of development. They did a really good job in that opening, I think, giving these people identities, the two girls and the two guys. And I thought that's what really gave levity to them being captured and all that. So kudos to the screenwriting. I mean, good job. I thought it was great. This movie's pretty simple. You know, once they they hit a cow on the road because of this biker gang who's just really giving them hell. I guess they want to rob them, beat the hell out of them. Who knows? And, you know, they hit the cow, Sheriff Hoyt shows up and loads them all in his car and takes all of them except for one back to the house where they are going to be tortured and mutilated. And we're back at that gorgeous Texas Chainsaw Massacre house that looked so cool. Um, This film, I just think, is darn good, okay? I revisited Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003, then revisited the beginning, and... While 03 really just hits the nail on the head perfectly with its casting, with its design, with its look, the beginning is really kind of more of the same, but I mean that in the best way possible. It's got that same feel vibe of the 2003 remake, but it just works, and it's got right elements to it that makes it feel Texas Chainsaw. And I think this was the right way to go. 
I, I'm still not sure about doing a real legitimate prequel with seeing a kid Leatherface. Because the one that came out, I was not a big fan of. I prefer Leatherface to be a big monster. So I, I, I just think that they did the right thing with this. Some call it a little bit more of the same. That's probably why it gets lost in the shuffle. But I'm a fan of this one. A really big fan. This is a great comfort watch movie, you know. Uh, I don't watch 03 too, too often. But I'll go to this one because... There's this homey feel to it. There's this comfort to it of this entry, I think, that you could throw it on at a moment's notice. And it just gives you everything I think you need from a Texas Chainsaw film, especially during the 2000s era. That was a great era, guys. When I look back on the 2000s, uh, whether it be the, the, the remakes that were coming out, there were some really good ones, or just be like the kind of the gore factor coming into the 2000s, I think that was a great time, and I really reminisce about it a lot now so this film falls under 2006 i think and uh, i just think that was a good time i think that was a good time and i think this movie is a perfect representation of that time so uh two, uh, 2006 is text change mask at the beginning i think is great one of my favorite shots in the film by far is when leatherface saws off his grand his uncles or his grandpa whoever the guy is part of the family has to saw, saw off his legs and it is the most 2000s gore ever and it's amazing. I love it. Uh, so I think that this film has good gore. And this Blu-ray, I got it off of Amazon. When I posted this on Instagram, people were like, where did you find that? Uh, this is a Canadian Blu-ray, and it was just on Amazon Prime. I live in America. So go now and go look for this, because I know a lot of people want this movie on unrated Blu-ray. Great Blu-ray, by the way. No real special features, but still. Uh, the movie looks good, and it's unrated. So um, I love this movie. I love this movie so much. I don't think it's the perfection of 03 because it really is retreading and kind of just going off the success of it but it delivers in being a texas chainsaw massacre film and it's even though it's more of the same thank you <laughs> nothing sometimes it's nothing's wrong with more of the same i love this film i revisit it more more often than not when it comes to the texas chainsaw franchise and it's a great entry. One of my favorite shots as well is at the very end when you see that massive shot, that panoramic, panoramic shot of the road, and you see Leatherface just walking into the darkness, and you hear that voice talking about what, what's, uh, what's happening. Gave me chills in the theaters. So if you kind of skip over this one because it kind of gets lost in the weeds, give this one a shot. This is a great entry. Don't skip over it. I think it's got a lot of merit. It's getting a fan base more so now. Today, I'm seeing people say, hey, hey, what about that beginning one, though? Did you see that one? Because it did get, kind of get lost in the weeds, and I want to fix that. I want to contribute to getting that out of the weeds and bringing it to the forefront because I love it. So you guys tell me what you think about Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. I'm a big fan. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think that's that's a fair rating. And a great entry. A great, great entry. I love it. So, Texas Chainsaw Massacre beginning. I love it. You guys tell me what you think. For now, this is Christian Hannah Hoare. We'll see you guys later.